There are five key stages to consider when using power mill to output to robots. The first is to create or select a toolpath within power mill. Then to select the desired robot cell. Align the CAD data within the cell. Simulate the toolpath with the desired robot. And then write the NC program in the language of the robot. Let's look in more detail at that process. Within Parable you can see I have a CAD model and the desired fixture tooling beneath it. I can select my toolpath using Parable Robot. I can firstly choose my robot from the library here I'm going to choose a Delcam robot with uh, a rotary table and a spindle. I do that by double clicking the robot and you can see that the robot has appeared within the session. Next I can position the robot within the cell. The following slide sequence summarizes the alignment process. Using the robot pendant we can firstly teach an object frame. Now that's typically done using three points in the pendant. The first of these points represents the XYZ origin, XYZ0. The second point represents the X-axis. The third point represents a point on the XY plane. Once those three values have been captured, the pendant will return the XYZ coordinates for the origin and the desired rotation angles for the planes. These values can be entered into the part alignment form within Power Mill. Now we don't need to do that on this occasion as the part is already in the center of the table. So moving on, we're now able to press the home button to first put the robot in the default posture, rewind to the start of the operation, and then play that sequence to see exactly what the robot will do in the process of machining this region. We can finally save that operation and as we save it, it is immediately loaded into a simulator at the bottom of the screen here. The first and most important thing to mention is that we get a tick here if everything is okay and there are no axis limits or singularities experienced by the robot. So this effectively means we can send this output to the robot safely. But we can also walk through the simulation to see exactly what the robot looked like at any position. Once we're happy, we can go to the final tab, which is the robot program output. I will provide a, a, a desired name and then add in the toolpath that is the top pocket. We press the right button and we can see immediately that an NC program has been created for that operation. So let us look in a little more detail at some of the control capabilities from within Power Mill Robot. If we select the side pocket toolpath, you can see that Power Mill Robot has immediately taken a default posture at the start of the operation. And this has been selected according to the tool control options we can see at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. The first and default option is to allow free motion of the robot. And what this basically means is that as we simulate this option, the robot is free to choose the posture as it travels around the toolpath. But it may be that we would like to control this wrist angle in order to keep it higher out of, uh, out of harm's way. In order to achieve that, we can choose one of the other options uh, on this tool control page. I'm going to choose set tool control to vector. Now when I choose that, 
I can use the rotate page to nudge the wrist joint into a higher posture. Having done that, I can go back to the tool control page and using the right hand mouse key, I can simply load the vector from the current robot position. Now, when I rewind and simulate, simulate this operation, you will see that the same toolpath is simulated but with a high wrist angle. So let's save that. And look at the profiling toolpath. So here we can see a profiling toolpath that goes around the perimeter of the component. And you can see that we have the tool control set to free, which is the default. I'm going to press the home button and then the attach to start of operation button and simulate this operation. And we could see there that we have a green tick, which is good. Everything's fine. We could send this to the robot. But if I were to walk through this operation, I notice here that there is quite a fast change of posture that may be undesirable. So I am going to choose to manipulate this toolpath to avoid that condition. So in order to achieve that, I'm going to use the orientation vectors available within PowerMill to control in detail how the wrist joint moves. So the first stage of that process is to go to the settings for the toolpath, recycle this toolpath, and go to the machine axis control page. From within here, I can change this to be following a specific direction or orientation vector, which is fixed along the x-axis. So the toolpath looks the same, but crucially, it now has some extra information, which are these vectors that define the desired orientation for the wrist or the X value of the robot. So if we go back to our tool control page, we can now flip over to the second of these options, which is to follow the orientation vector. Press the home button, rewind to the start of the operation and simulate. And you can see that the wrist is staying in alignment with the X. But unfortunately, at this position, that means that we would hit an axis limit. So now we can take advantage of some of the more powerful functionality within Powerball Robot to manipulate this local region. And to achieve that, I'm going to select the virtual teach pendant and use the nudge tools available on this pendant to nudge the robot into a preferred position and posture for the motion around the corner, the tag region of this component. So let's do that. Let's nudge around, first of all, the z-axis. Maybe zoom down a touch and whiz that round. And then I'm going to use the nudge tools along the x and the y to move the robot down towards the bottom of that tag region. And maybe looking a little bit more closely, move it down in z slightly as well. So something along those lines puts us pretty co close to the, uh, the desired position. Yeah. Okay, so having got that, I'm going to go through to the Robot Control tab. And on the Robot Control page, I'm going to go to the Tools tab, and then to the Edit Toolpath Orientation Vectors icon. And on here, I'm able to specify that I wish to modify the toolpath at a local point, which is the point we're currently at. So I'll press this button here to load that. And then I'm going to provide a couple of blend distances before and after that position. So let's say 300 millimeters for both, so that it blends smoothly to this new position around that corner. So when we apply that, and zoom out maybe, let's close off a couple of these windows, and 
rewind to the start of this operation. When we simulate now, what we see is that we maintain that X vector, but then we blend smoothly around this corner in the desired fashion. And of course we can save that and we see we have a tick, it's a clean bill of health for this one and of course we can then walk around at our leisure to examine in more detail exactly what occurs at that position. Good. Okay, but this cell has a seventh axis so we could if we desired take advantage of the rotary axis whilst machining this profile. And to show you how we might go about that, take a look at the robot control tab here. You can see the axes 1 to 6 of the robot and then E1, which is the external axis number 1, which is the table. Currently, you can see the status of that table is static. So that means that the robot is not allowed to move this table whilst solving the, uh, the toolpath. I'm going to change the priority and I can do that for any joint. And you can see there are different priorities here I can assign to different joints and I'm going to change the table to be a high priority. So now the robot will try to move the table over and above any other axis whilst driving around this toolpath. So let's rewind to the start again. And as before, let's play this simulation. And you can see now that the table is very active whilst trimming this component. So as well as being able to control the priority of the table, it's also possible to manipulate the range of angle that each joint of the robot is allowed to move through. So if we took a, take a look at axis 5, or the E axis on this robot as you can see, you can see there's quite a sharp angle there. And although we're not actually hitting the limits of the robot, that would be given as a warning down here. You can see I've expanded out there the analysis and we've got a clean bill of health for everything, so it would run absolutely fine, but it may be that that's undesirable, uh, and again, I would prefer to minimize that angle. So to achieve that, I can go to the Axis 5 page, and right-hand mouse click over the limits values, and set a new minimum value to be minus 90 degrees. So you can see now that that's updated in red to say I've overridden the defaults. If I were to once again rewind to the start of that operation and simulate, as before, Power Mill Robot will drive around this toolpath, but you can see there that it's just uh, indicating that it's not going beyond the 90 degrees as it solves that. And again, I can save that. Once again, a, a clean bill of health. And there is where we've limited. So it's using a different axis to solve the motion in that area without going beyond the 90 degrees that we requested. Finally, we can add that operation to our NC program and of course write that out in the language of the robot. Of course, optionally I can simulate that as an entire NC program, so as I play here you can see the entire simulation and I'm going to whiz that through to show you that we're actually simulating not only the toolpath but we're simulating the motion between each toolpath that the robot will take. The last thing to mention before finishing is that throughout all of this simulation process we are protected by the collision checking of Powermill Robot. So if I were to manually grab hold of, let's say, Axis 2 of this robot and drive it down deliberately into the component, you'll see that we're immediately presented with a warning that there has been a collision. Uh, this is modal, so it stops, and I must confirm before I can continue. So we're protected at every stage by the complete collision checking of Powermill Robot.